Well, it's always good to be back at Prepaid Legal with my friend and mentor, Harlan Stonecipher. Harlan, thanks for talking with us today. Well, Jim, thank you. I'm glad to do it. Just glad to have you back in Ada, Oklahoma. You know, people have read about you. You've been in the Wall Street Journal. You've been in all the business uh, magazines and everything. You know, they know about you being the fastest growing company on the American Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. But uh, I know how you got started. Share with me just a minute about how you got started. Well, Jim, really, I got started because of an accident that I was involved in, in fact, back in 1969. And uh, it was an accident that wasn't my fault, and a fairly serious accident. In fact, both of us uh, wound up in the hospital with some pretty serious injuries. And uh, the lady just uh, made an improper left turn in front of me. I was probably doing 65 mile an hour, something like that, whatever the speed limit was. And uh, we hit head on. And uh, of course, it totaled out in both of the cars. Uh, as I said, we wound up in the hospital. There was some question about whether she was going to live or not. I had uh, hospitalization insurance that took care of my doctor bills. I had automobile insurance that took care of my replacing my automobile. But I was just simply not prepared for a lawsuit. And the fact is, even though it was her fault, she sued me. And I was really didn't even know a lawyer, like most people are, I think, today. And uh, uh, I was you know, concerned about what it would cost, and rightly so, and didn't really have the money to be able to afford a lawyer. But I uh, was able to borrow some money from some of my relatives to, uh, be able to, to be able to hire a lawyer, which was just absolutely necessary in this, in this case. And as a result of that, I began to think that most Americans, when they leave home, just like I did that morning, uh, they're not thinking about having a legal problem. Now, it may not be an automobile accident, it may be something else, but they, they're not thinking about it, they're just totally unprepared, and most people cannot afford the services of a lawyer. So that gave me the, that situation gave me the idea which uh, eventually turned into Prepaid Legal Services, Inc. Well, one of the reasons I wanted you to make an appearance in The Lamp and visit with us today, as you know, The Lamp's about wishes and dreams and making your life look like what you want it to look like. And I have spoken at so many of your events, and you stand there in an arena full of people, thousands and thousands of people, and you and your organization probably give opportunities to people to make their wishes come true about money and the family and the time and their career and everything they want to do. And how does that make you feel that, uh, you know, not only do you have success, but on top of that, thousands and thousands of people can make their wishes come true because you did what you did? Uh, Jim, I, I think uh, almost every day that I'm probably one of the most fortunate people in the world in the fact that every day when I leave and, and I go home, uh, I think that Shirley and I have helped someone somewhere today, every day whether it's somebody that used the prepaid legal service membership, whether it's a new associate that's getting started, or whether it's an existing associate that has moved to a new level of income. You know, we award people based on their levels of, of income. And we have a lot of people that hit the $100,000 mark in a 12-month period of time. And then the next uh, step is to hit $250,000 in a 12-month period. And then the half-million-dollar ring, and then the million-dollar ring. and and we just have people constantly achieving those mm -hmm. levels. And Jim, that's just a, a great feeling. I, I've always believed that we were put here for a reason. And I believe that reason is to help other people. And well, and I've, I've sat there with you many times as you're honoring those people. And with all due respect, the, the most amazing thing about those people, by and large, is there's nothing amazing. These are normal people <laughs> that, that they had a dream. I, I mean, is that the most important part of it? I think it is that uh, there's so many people out there that never really get an opportunity. And that's what we do. We give people an opportunity. We, I don't do it for them. They do it on their, uh, on their own. And I think part of the is that we do teach people how to dream. Uh, everybody as a youngster has some dream. I, all of us is growing up, we, we have dreams. But somewhere along the way, then, as we begin to face life, uh, I'd say most of the people lose those dreams. They give up on them. They say, well, it's never going to happen. I, you know, I'm never going to have that dream home, or I'm mm -hmm. never going to be able to drive that car. I always thought I'd be able to drive. And what we want to do is to convince people that those dreams can come true. And that's, 
I think that's a big part of what we do is we convince people that your dream can come true. It, your past doesn't dictate what your future is and we try to get that out of their mind and again to just get them to thinking what was that dream and uh, I think it was uh, in the book Think and Go Rich that I first read that whatever the man of mind can conceive and believe it can achieve and I'm a big believer in that if you can conceive of it if you can believe it you can achieve it and that's again what we try to get across to our folks out there most people, if they're given three wishes, like our characters were in the story, uh, the book, and the movie, The Lamp, most people, their first choice is going to be money. They want money. Sure. Why do you think that is? Well, I just think that's what everybody thinks about, is that if, if I had money, I would be happy. Uh, it would cure, uh, cure all of my other problems. Well, unfortunately, that's, that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of other things that goes into happiness, and was having a discussion just the other day with some folks about people winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody thinks, well, I want to win the lottery. I mean, that's uh, uh, $322 million. Right. But if you look back at people who have won the lottery, most of those are broke today. Right. Some of them have committed suicide. They just couldn't stand the pressure that went with it. And I think the difference is that, that you know that you've earned the money, that uh, I did something to help other people. That's mm -hmm. how I got this money. They bought the right lottery ticket. I don't know that that's a, an adequate reason for being rich, but if you help enough other people along the way, and as a result of that, then you create wealth. I think then that's the way you want to create it, and you can feel good about that. And that's, again, the very basis of, of prepaid legal services. You know, another thing people would wish for, and they, they did in our story, The Lamp, is, is things for and are surrounding their family. And, uh, you know, one of the things that always impressed me most about you from the very first meeting we ever had and everyone since then, there's Shirley. I mean, it's not like you bring her in or include her. She is part of the picture here. And uh, what role does family play in your life and success? Well, let me tell you, she's played a major role. And... Uh, just the other day, a very good friend of ours was telling some folks, and I think maybe he did a little bit as a joke, but I think he really meant it. He said, uh, I tell people that uh, the real brains behind this family is Shirley, and mm -hmm. I didn't disagree with him. Uh, no, she's been there since day one, and I can assure you, uh, I could never have made it, and I'm serious about that, I would have quit, because there's too many times that at the end of the day, I thought, hey, this is, this is impossible. I mean, I can't overcome whatever it was that, that I'm facing right now. And never once did she ever agree and say, yeah, I think you ought to quit. I think you ought to go back to teaching school. Uh, she always said, you know, we can do it. You, you, you'll come up with a way. And, you know, she believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. Right. And that's what's so important. And that's the reason that, you know, we, whatever we do today, it's still, it's, it's still a team. And you think that's a, a key to having a successful family? Oh, I do. I, I definitely do. I, I think uh, that's been the key to, to, our, uh, um, to our success. Uh, and, and I know that there are people out there that, that do achieve success without help and support of the family. But it's very hard for me to visualize me having accomplished really very much had I not had that support from my family. Let's say we had our magic lamp here today in your office. Um, and you got three wishes, Harlan. What, what would Harlan Stonecipher wish for today, this point in your life, your career? What, what, what would you wish for? Well, I would wish for prepaid legal services just to continue to grow and develop as a company because as it grows and develops, it only does it one way, and, and that's by people growing and, and developing, and, and that's the whole concept. Uh, as I talk, when I talk to our sales associates uh, every time, I, I tell them I never want to forget, I want to tell them on every call, you're the most important people in the world to me, because you are. And I don't, I don't forget that because I, I believe that, I'm not I believe it, I know it, because nothing happens until a sale's made. They're the folks that are out there making that sale. We don't have many people walk into this home office here in Ada and buy a membership. They get bought out there in the field, they get sold by those people out there. So those are the most important people in the world, and if they're selling a lot of memberships, then we're growing, and we're doing the things that I want us to do. Our provider lawyers, our 
profiting from that. We can pay our people here in the home office more money and do uh, uh, more bonuses. So my, my wish would be just for continued growth, even more rapid growth of prepaid legal services, and then that answers all the other wishes that I want for all of our folks that are associated with us and those that may become associated in the future. When you started out, you were a school teacher. Correct. Uh, you ever wish you'd stayed and been a school teacher? Well, the, the answer is no, but let me explain that. I, I didn't dislike teaching school. I liked teaching school. I enjoyed it. I thought I was good at what I did. But I, I just realized uh, one day that I'm never going to be able to, to, to accomplish that dream that we talked about a minute ago uh, because I'm limited in what I can do. And anytime you've got a limit, and uh, the fact is, anytime you work for someone else, uh, you're, you're not in control of your future. You don't control your destiny. Uh, they control your destiny. So all of that came to me one day, and I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to do what I wanted to do. I, I had the one son at that time, and, and uh, I'm a little bit like, I guess, the, the, the folks in the lamp is that we were not doing as well as I wanted us to do and not doing as well as I had dreamed that we would do. So I decided that I had to do something so I could take control of my future, so I could take control of my destiny. So no, I, I think the greatest decision I ever made was when I made the decision, Shirley and I made the decision, that we go into business for ourselves and control our destiny. I think that's the greatest decision I ever made in my life, other than marrying Shirley. Few people have ever experienced the high points and some of the low points you've experienced in your life. How do you keep it together and keep the attitude you have through all of that? You know, I, I think, and again, I, maybe I'm not a good judge of myself, but I think it's pretty easy to do. I think you just have to recognize how you got to where you are. Uh, it'd be easy to say, well, you know, I've done all these great things. I really haven't. Uh, people around me. I think if I have a, a, a great quality, it's the ability to attract good people. And that's what's caused this to be a great company. Uh, people you met with this morning in that boardroom, these are great people. Some of those people have been with me 30 years. And they're dedicated people. Uh, people out in the field, uh, Ken Moore right here in Ada, Oklahoma, has been with me almost uh, 30 years. A guy that was a, went broke as a butcher. And today, uh, his income is over a half million dollars a year, and that's going to continue in the form of residual income whether he works or he doesn't. So that's, that's the things that I, that I stop to think about is that it's, uh, it's not what I've done out there. It's what these people around me have done. Now, yes, I've benefited. Again, I go back to uh, what I heard Zig Ziglar say many years ago, and I believe it today more than I did then. But... Zig said, if you're willing to help enough other people get what they want, you can get what you want. And I, and I believe that is a fact. I believe that's true. And I believe you have to stay focused on helping other people get what they want. If you do that, you won't be so focused on yourself. Let's say there's a couple out there right now. They're kind of like our couple in, in The Lamp, in the movie that uh, people just watched. And... Uh, you know, the, the money's not uh, stretching to the end of the month. They're not able to take care of things. They, maybe they're losing their house or their car. Their marriage is falling apart uh, from all the other pressures. Their career, they're not happy with their jobs. They don't see themselves going anywhere. They, they, they don't see the big picture. Their dreams have all died. And they're sitting there, and uh, Lou Gossett and a lamp are probably not coming into their world. What do you tell them? What does Harlan Stonecipher tell those people right now? Well, I, I tell them basically the same thing. I think that Lou Gossett uh, told them, but maybe just in a little different way. I tell people that they were that they, when they were put here, they were destined for greatness. I believe that. I believe every person that's here is destined for greatness. Uh, the scripture that uh, really changed my life when I realized uh, what it was saying was John 10:10. 10, 10. He said, "I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly." Well. I said, he's talking to me. He's talking to me not only about having life, but he's talking to me about having an abundant life. And, and something that I've got here in my office that I look at uh, every day, he says, I know the plans I have for you, uh, not to harm you, but to help you and to give you hope in the future. And I believe that's all real. And, and that's what I talk to people about. I think one of the biggest problems 
is getting people to realize that they can be successful. People have been beaten down. They've failed at a lot of different things, but that doesn't mean that they're a failure. Uh, it simply means that they maybe they gave up too quickly or whatever, but they can still do whatever they want to do. But I go back to your statement, uh, Jim, that I've heard you make so many times about uh, the way to help me with that. The way to change your life is to change your mind. Change your mind. And Jim, that is so true. I mean, I remember that from the first time I ever heard you speak. And that's what I believe, that anyone with just average intelligence uh, can change their life by changing their mind. Now, that's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. It may take the, the genie to come in and, and do that as it did for this family. But that's my goal when I talk to people is to get them to realize, yeah, maybe you haven't uh, been successful. Maybe you've had uh, a lot of failures. Uh, uh, you didn't have a good marriage, uh, all of those things, but that's behind you. That's the past, and it doesn't determine your future. You were destined for greatness, and it's up to you to do that, and I want to help you do it because I know that you have the ability to do it. And if I can get, and, and I, uh, again, that's part of, uh, of your talk that, uh, that I've heard you make, and I've heard you say, you know, if no one else believes in you, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs somebody to believe in them. I mean, that is so important. That's been, I think, uh, what Shirley's done for me. She just always believed in me. And right. a lot of people haven't had that. And I want people to know, just like you do, I believe in you. Right. And I want to help you be what you can be if you want to. Well, Harlan, I want to thank you. You've been a friend. You've been a mentor. You've been an encourager to me and so many others. And. Uh, you know, now as a part of this lamp, uh, the movie The Lamp, and uh, the story we're sharing, you know, that's a story. But to bring real people like you into the picture behind the scenes and be able to share uh, that this is not a fantasy. This is, this is not uh, make-believe. This is real stuff. And I just want to thank you for all you are and just for being a part of this project. Jim, yeah, I want to thank you for including me in it. This is fun. This is exciting. Thank you.